Diary of Wimpy Kid Wrecking Ball. It's time to take a deeper look inside the mind of Greg Hefley. Now listen, I've read your comments. I've seen that you want more Wimpy Kid analysis videos, so why was there such a long gap? And why am I jumping all the way to the newest book in the series? Well, to tell you the truth, I lost passion for making the videos and reading the books. It was more or less the same few things each time, so things were getting a bit repetitive and uninteresting. Maybe I'll go back into the other parts, maybe I won't, but at the very least, Let's dive into Wrecking Ball and see if Greg has improved as a person. As always, we'll be going through some of the examples classifying him as a soon-to-be sociopath, or at least just an awful person nobody should be friends with. What you notice immediately while looking at Wrecking Ball's cover is that it's different than many of the other diaries. Greg is always disappointed, but this time his entire house has been destroyed and uh, he's really not having it. That's where the main storyline of the book comes in, when the Hefley household is in bad condition and they're thinking about maybe moving somewhere else. Like the other Wimpy Kid books, this story only really picks up halfway through and the first half is just a bunch of general nonsense through Greg's daily life. At one point in the book, Greg holds a yard sale and tries tricking everyone by scamming them with terrible products. Nobody ended up buying what he had to offer, which means of course he writes several pages about how he's going to be extremely famous one day and everything will be worth much more than it currently is. Anyone who's been keeping up with the Wimpy Kid books knows that this happens in just about every entry and it's because Greg really does believe he'll grow up to be one of the most well-known people in the world. He thinks more highly of himself than a normal teenager, endlessly writing about having his own museums and people getting happy over owning his stuff. One of the many classifications of a sociopath is that they have a sense of superiority over everyone else, and yeah, we all know who that can apply to. He even goes so far as to say he'll have his own holiday, in the same way as someone like Martin Luther King Jr. Yikes, that should give you a pretty good idea of just how highly he views himself. There's a lot that happens throughout this newest entry in the Wimpy Kids series, and honestly, it's normal stuff about Greg being a typical whiny middle schooler. In the later half of the book, though, some of his true colors are further revealed when the plot about moving away kicks into full gear. He talks about how if he moved, he would need to find a new best friend. I've invested a lot of time and energy into Rally, and I can't really see myself starting over with someone new. <sighs> as always, Craig doesn't see Rally as a friend, and more of just a pawn to use for his own success. This is apparent throughout many of the other diaries, and it's also common through the average sociopath. They manipulate people around them in any way they can by using humor, and they attempt to control others to their benefit. Greg always bullies Rally, but he uses the simple excuse of it being a joke, so Rally doesn't get too mad. Something else worth mentioning is that sociopaths usually lack empathy. They don't feel very happy for other people besides them themselves, and it happens here! Greg talks about the new addition to his house that'll make his kitchen even bigger, just to make Rowley jealous. Of course, because Rowley is too pure for this world, he became happy for his friend, but Greg on the other hand was confused. He even added his own selfish comment that reveals he doesn't care about his friend at all, only himself. Rowley's house is newer than ours, and it's a lot bigger too. And that's not right, because Rowley's an only child, so he doesn't even need all that room. Of course, there's been more than a few instances of Greg being terrible, but you know what? I think there's some real friendship there. Why? Because in one of the final pages of Wrecking Ball, a rare piece of character development is revealed. Rowley said I could hang the collage in my new bedroom to remind me of all the fun stuff we did together. And I don't know if there was a lot of pollen in the air tonight or what, but right then, I think I got something in my eye. Greg Hefley crying over Rowley? Hold up, what's going on here? In almost every previous case, the two haven't shared a real relationship, but things may not be as black and white as we believed. True, the Wimpy Kid himself has proved himself to be mean and a possible soon-to-be sociopath on multiple occasions, but in small moments like these, there's hope. When we take a look inside the mind of Greg Hefley, it's complicated, a bit more than expected for a simple series of kids books. His adventures will continue in future installments, and more of his personal motives will be revealed. We're just gonna have to wait and see. But anyway, that's all for this video. Subscribe for more awesome cartoon videos, give a thumbs up, and comment below well, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.